enjoying the opportunity to fly in space while aiding in the pursuit of knowledge are common traits among the six members of the International Space Station's Expedition 37 crew. Fyodor Yurchikin was born and raised in the Black Sea port city of Batumi in Soviet Georgia, growing up in a time and place where all the children wanted to be cosmonauts, where the winners of kids' games were called Gagarins. Yurchikin wanted to be a part of that life, even if he couldn't be a dashing test pilot. What reason I understood maybe in this day, in this time, then uh, it's maybe in my health, it's not enough to be a cosmonaut, but what is more important for me, be a pilot or be an engineer in space program? Of course, the space program, it was too important for me. So after high school, Yurchikin went to the Moscow Aviation Institute, earned a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering specializing in aerospace vehicles, and went straight to work for the Rocket Space Corporation Energia as an engineer. He worked as a flight controller, and when he became lead engineer for the Mir shuttle program, he spent time at NASA's Johnson Space Center supporting that effort. Yurchikin was selected as an Energia cosmonaut in 1997 and earned a Ph.D. in economics at Moscow Service State University while preparing for his first space flight. He was a member of the STS-112 crew that delivered a piece of the station's starboard truss during Expedition 5 in 2002. He returned five years later on a Soyuz spacecraft as commander of Expedition 15 and made three spacewalks and followed that with two more EVAs as a station flight engineer on Expeditions 24 and 25 in 2010. He believes the station program is paying off in the things we're learning while making the effort, from improving the spacecraft themselves to the tools we develop. But the first big, exactly great sensor for digital cameras, it was factored for this program. And now it's usual for everybody. It's usual for my daughters. It's usual for young boys and girls. I know my profession, it's very important for human. Why I am on this road. Italian Air Force Major Luca Parmitano is from Sicily, born in Paterno and raised in Catania in the shadow of Mount Etna. Although he was very young when he saw the first space shuttles fly on television, he was captivated by the idea of what those images represented. So I remember seeing the, the first astronauts floating around, uh, around the space shuttle doing, doing their job. And I think that even in a kid, as small as I was, I, I just thought that must be the greatest job in the world to be able to do those things and, and, and call it a living. So since then, I, I had the, this dream of becoming an astronaut. Parmitano won a scholarship to spend a year of high school in Southern California. In that year in America, he not only intensified his desire to be a pilot by living with a host family in which the father was a marine navigator, but he met the girl who years later would become his wife. Back in Italy, Parmitano earned a bachelor's degree in political sciences at the University of Naples and graduated from Italy's Air Force Academy then completed his basic training at the Euro-NATO Joint Jet Pilot Training Program at Shepard Air Force Base in Texas. After six years with a fighter squadron in Italy, he was sent to France to train as a test pilot and earned a master's in experimental flight test engineering at the Superior Institute of Aeronautics and Space in Toulouse in 2009, the same year he was selected for astronaut training by the European Space Agency. Now he's making his childhood dream a reality and fulfilling a desire to push the boundaries of human knowledge. That's who we are. That's what makes us humans. Uh, that is what makes us uh, different from, all, from the rest of the, uh, of, of the animal kingdom. And if we don't follow our, of our nature of being explorators, of being thinkers, then we are denying a part of ourselves that is incredibly important. Dr. Karen Nyberg was part of a big family growing up in the tiny town of Vining, Minnesota. And from the time she was a very young girl, she knew she wanted to be an astronaut, although she doesn't know why. She learned some solitary pursuits as a little girl. I've been sewing. My mom taught me to sew when I was probably five or six years old. I've been drawing since I was also that age. I used to, I would never sit in front of the television just sitting there watching TV. I always had a piece of paper and a pencil and was drawing or doodling or doing something. 
but she took advantage of being in a small town to join more school activities than most kids in big city schools join. I was on the basketball team, the volleyball team, the track team. I took stats for the baseball team. I was in the choir. I was in the band. I was in the drama club. I was able to participate in all of them, um, learn to be a team member. She went to the University of North Dakota to study engineering and learned about a program that lets students work at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. Nyberg worked as a co-op in Houston while finishing her bachelor's in mechanical engineering in Grand Forks and while starting her graduate work at the University of Texas at Austin. After she finished a master's and a doctorate in mechanical engineering in Austin, she returned to JSC, working full-time in the Crew and Thermal Systems Division for two years before she was picked for the astronaut program in 2000, where she met her future husband, fellow astronaut candidate Doug Hurley. Nyberg was part of the STS-124 space shuttle crew that delivered the Kibo Laboratory Module and Japanese robotic arm to the International Space Station in 2008 and was the first person to ever operate the shuttle robotic arm, the main station arm, and the Japanese arm. She's confident this mission will appeal to the adventure seeker in today's kids. I think a, a lot of it is based just on human nature, that we are all very curious people. Um, human beings like challenges, and this is an ultimate challenge. Dr. Oleg Kotov is a native of Simferopol in what is now Ukraine. But as the son of a Soviet military officer, he grew up all over Russia and had his sights set on the military for his own career by the time he finished high school in Moscow. I decided to become uh, a military officer as well, like my father, my grandfather. However, I kept dreaming about space, and while I, was, I had to select my major, I was very careful about it, and I became a military surgeon in the area of aerospace medicine. After graduation from the Kirov Military Medical Academy, Kotov went to work at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center as a doctor studying altitude physiology and the effects of spaceflight on the human body. At the same time, he studied diagnostics and methods of pilot selection and also earned a degree in patenting. In 1996, he entered Air Force Pilot School and was selected for cosmonaut training. He made his first spaceflight in 2007 and completed two spacewalks as a flight engineer on Expedition 15. He did another EVA during Expedition 22 before becoming commander of the station for Expedition 23 in 2010. Kotov then served as deputy chief of the GCTC before starting training for this mission, which presented another opportunity to fulfill the human instinct to learn new things. It's a desire to understand the world around you, to expand the area where we live, to explore the space, Mars, Moon, other star systems. So it's a question about a desire to learn something new. Dr. Sergei Rezansky is a rarity among Russian cosmonauts, one who was born and raised in Moscow. As the son of engineers and a grandson of Mikhail Rezansky, a leading Soviet engineer specializing in missile and spacecraft radio guidance, Rezansky had his sights set on a career in science at a young age. When I was a child, I wanted to become a biologist. So I was studying in a specialized school where we were majoring in biology, so I knew that I would be a scientist. I think I knew that since I was in the sixth grade. I knew that I would uh, try to go to the Moscow State University. Where he graduated with a degree in biochemistry and went straight to work at the Institute for Biomedical Problems at the Russian Academy of Sciences. His specialization in ways to prevent the adverse effects caused by the absence of gravity got him involved in the space industry and sparked an interest in becoming a cosmonaut himself. In 2003, he was selected to join IBMP's Cosmonaut Corps and completed basic training at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center. In 2006, he earned his doctorate in physiology and space medicine. And in 2009, he was crew commander in a 105-day-long isolation experiment 
known as Mars 500. By 2010, he was certified as a GCTC test cosmonaut, which he calls the most interesting job in the world because it combines so many things. Anything you can think of is combined by this profession. And being part of this industry is very interesting. You have new technologies, new approaches, and you're always on the edge, so to say. You always know the latest developments. It's very interesting to live this life. It's very interesting to train for this life. That's why I became a cosmonaut. U.S. Air Force Colonel Mike Hopkins is from south-central Missouri, born in Lebanon and raised a few miles away on a farm outside Richland. He credits his small-town upbringing for his getting the chance to try everything in high school, not only football and other sports, but all school activities, and for developing his interest in engineering. My father was a pilot in the Marines back in the early 60s. Uh, he flew A-4s. And so there was aviation in, in my family. So that certainly uh, piqued my interest in it and uh, my interest in space. Uh, my desire to become an astronaut uh, started back in high school. Hopkins headed to the University of Illinois to study aerospace engineering. He also walked on to the football team and ended up as a starter and a team captain by the time he graduated with his bachelor's in aerospace engineering and a commission in the Air Force earned through the ROTC. After finishing a master's in aerospace engineering at Stanford, Hopkins began his Air Force career in a laboratory working on space systems technologies. Then he moved on to become a flight test engineer, even spending time as an exchange officer at the Canadian Flight Test Center in Alberta. In 2002, Hopkins won a scholarship to study political science in Italy, after which he was assigned to work in acquisitions at the Pentagon, and then as a special assistant to the vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the job he had when he was selected as an astronaut in 2009. He's the first member of his astronaut class to fly in space and eager to use his mission to try to help satisfy our desire to learn. Uh, humans are always striving for, for knowledge, for knowing what's beyond the hill, for knowing how each little thing works in, in our world. Um, whether it's uh, the human itself, whether it's anything within biology, the physical world, uh, all of that, we, we have this desire to know as much as we can about that. And, and the space station, the International Space Station, fits right into that.